All right then. So I tried to record this once before, but the recording capture, the recording software decided it didn't want to. So hopefully this works this time. Hello everybody. Uh, welcome to this sort of Jurassic World Evolution 2 speculation video based on the evidence we uh, already have. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be like producing. I don't know. Best in science is going to be producing a ton of videos about this. I don't want to waste anyone's time personally. I just want to get through one video, especially since I don't have enough time to be devoting to YouTube to make you know, a hundred videos on this topic. I have so much work ahead of me that uh, I genuinely don't know when I have my next day off. So I'm going to have to use the short less than an hour of time right now to try to talk about this as much as I can while the room is turning to 100 degrees Fahrenheit because I can't have the fan on while I do this. I recorded a 30-minute session of this with the fan off and now it's like 90 degrees in here. So hopefully let's just stop complaining and talk about the fun stuff which is Jurassic World Evolution 2 they've released a lot of information most of it is vague and uh, it doesn't really cover much it leaves a lot of room for speculation and I'm pretty sure that's off by design probably actually because you know they go ooh more talk about the game they can get more free publicity and I'll you know I'll bite I'll, I'll go in because I really do want I really do want a lot from this game and I do uh, hope we can <laughs> do hope we can get a lot from it so uh, let's just uh, let's just let's just start First of all, let's start with the campaign. Differences in the campaign between, you know, the original game and this game. The first question I have is whether we are still going to be building a dinosaur park or whether we're going to be building dinosaur preserves. That may seem like a very small thing to be like, oh, what's, which one is it? But it actually does have kind of a lot of effects on the campaign, and we'll get into that as we get further down this list. Uh, first, and let's talk about... Legacy cast. How many are going to be coming back for Jurassic Park? I mean, the Return to Jurassic Park DLC, Jurassic World Evolution got. You got all of the original, you know, three members: Ian Malcolm, Alan Grant, and Ellie Sattler. You know, Laura Dern, Sam Neill, and Jeff Goldblum all came back to reprise their roles. Uh, can we? Oh yeah. Before we continue, can we get Chris Pratt in? Is he going to be able to do it this time, or is he going to? We have to stick with his impersonator again. I and mean, I didn't really mind too much, although a lot of people did. I didn't. It was obvious it wasn't him, but mm, it wasn't exactly game ruining. I just kind of hope he can actually be here for this one. But uh, all they mentioned in their little release so far, their little press releases, is that uh, Ian Malcolm and Claire Deering will be in the game. You know, Bryce Dallas, Howard, and Jeff Goldblum. So we really don't have direct confirmation that Sam Neill or <laughs> Laura Dern or Chris Pratt are coming in to voice their characters. So hopefully we can get everyone back. <laughs> well, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, they mentioned new environments. You know, the the, uh, the deserts and whatnot. We can see one of them here. This little redwood forest area. Not really redwood forest. Whatever. But well, we did see a redwood forest. Just not this one. And the question is, how far is that going to go? Are we going to be able to go to the frozen tundras? Because I know... For Jurassic World Dominion's, like, like there was like leaked photos of like a crane pla a, a crane a plane crashed in the snow, and things like that. Are we gonna get some snowy environments? Is that gonna be possible? Like, how many different environments are we actually gonna get? Can we get like a swamp? That'd be, ooh, that'd be that'd, that'd be pretty cool if we can get like a swamp or something. There's enough opportunity to really uh, go across the globe to see some really interesting locations, and I'm curious just how much I'll take advantage of that. Uh, are we gonna be even digging up fossils anymore? Uh, or are we recapturing the dinosaurs? And this is where the whole dinosaur preserves as dinosaur parks thing comes in. Because if we're building a dinosaur park, we'll definitely be digging up fossils. But if we're a dinosaur preserve, you're supposed to preserve the dinosaurs that are already in the wild. You're not supposed to be making more. Uh, <laughs> there are ways you could probably get around that, but I don't. But if they genuinely, but you know, it's like if there really is a change, because this is a dinosaur preserve and then dinosaur park, you can't really just go out and keep making new dinosaurs. And, uh, you know, it's like, I, you've been considering, is the is is it not going to be a fossil hunting team? Is it going to be a dinosaur capture team? You send off to different locations in the United States where the uh, different dinosaurs have established their populations in an attempt to capture them? That would be an interesting twist on the gameplay. Not, like, a super big twist that changes the entire game and reworks the system, but it, it, it would be a nice little, you know, nice way to dress up this, uh, pretty much the same feature as before. And if we do go to dinosaur preserves, uh... Or even dinosaur parks. Are we even gonna like have the science, entertainment, and security divisions? Even if we do do a dinosaur park, are we gonna be moving on to corporate sponsors and like partners and whatnot? 
Even a dinosaur preserve is going to need a way to make money, which means probably corporate sponsors and partners are absolutely going to be a thing if you go for dinosaur preserves, because you can't have security, entertainment, and science in a dinosaur preserve. It just wouldn't work. And so, I mean, this is this is what I'm getting into. There is a, quite a lot that could change just based on the change of one word. One different word that starts with P. From parks to preserves. There's, there's a lot that could change the way the game sort of displays things and the way things play out and whatnot. And even to the length of sabotage. If we do Dinosaur Park, we just stick with the same old security, entertainment, and science, which would be a shame, but, you know, that might be what we're going for. Who knows? And sabotage would probably function the exact same way, but Dinosaur Preserves with corporate sponsors? If we go and we partner with Biosyn for whatever reason, would we would we then be sabotaged by Manticore? Or InGen? Or anyone, really? I mean, if we do Dinosaur Preserves and we do corporate sponsors, then there's really no way to keep every corporation happy. You have to pick one and kind of stick with them, which means the rest are always going to be a sabotage risk. A problem I found with the original Jurassic World Evolution is once you learned what you were doing, you could pretty much balance all three of the uh, divisions easily, and there was very little sabotage risk ever. That was a bit of a problem, because eventually the sabotages just ceased to exist until eventually you let yourself slip and one happened, but that would be like like 10 hours past your last one and just sabotages just ended up becoming a non-problem and I feel like that kind of is a bit of a bummer and if we did do dance preserves and corporate sponsors sabotages could always be a risk and there's no way to stop that and they could even make the sabotages a bit more advanced perhaps someone steals your dinosaur DNA and you have to rebuild it or something you know you, you have your triceratopses if you're you know you're going behind the scenes like you can even do some more like illegal stuff like, you know, like, you have to keep your corporation happy, which means you have to do a little bit of push and pull with their, uh, not-so-legal activities <laughs> to keep, uh, funding. That could be an interesting way to handle things. You have to, oh, well, they demand you give them a triceratops. Uh, you kind of have to work with them, even though you shouldn't be doing that. So you send one off, and, uh, <laughs> you have to work around different things like that. It could be really, really interesting, having to work around the law to keep the corporations happy that are sponsoring your park. Or preserve, sorry. There's so much you could do with this in terms of storytelling and gameplay and missions and whatnot. It just really does... It makes the it could make the game feel entirely different if they do it right. Same features presented in such different ways. It could be a lot of fun. I mean, even the buildings themselves could probably be specific to corporations and uh, certain uh, relationships with them. And speaking of buildings, they mentioned, we, we've seen in the image that there's like a... There's like a bunch of like rainbow colored buildings, you know, you got purple, blue, green, all sorts of crazy stuff. I think you might be able to recolor buildings a la Zoo Tycoon, uh, which would be really nice. I know people want like fully customizable build your own buildings. I don't. I don't care for that stuff. I just want a good building that looks nice and I can put it in my park. I really don't want to be left because like, a problem I had with Planet Zoo, Planet, I really had a, this problem with Planet Zoo, is that your options if you didn't know or didn't want to engage with the building tools, was boxes that were extremely uninteresting and boring, or extremely specific regional themes. There was no in-between, and it really killed my enjoyment of the game because I couldn't make a, just a, just a general-looking zoo. I either had to build the bland zoo for the boring with only square buildings, or I had to build the zoo that's based on Japanese culture or Indian culture. That's that's nice for them. I just like a zoo theme. A regular zoo theme, please. It's not so boring. It's just a wooden or concrete box. And I really do think that hopefully with the... Edit, I mean, the buildings on here already look really, look really neat. And I'm hoping that they can allow us to recolor them. And with the simple addition of a recolor and uh, some well-designed buildings, I'll be happy. I don't need fully customizable buildings. It'd be nice if they were there, but it'll be nice for people that aren't me, because I'm not going to touch that stuff. I hate... I, I just... I, I, I am a park manager, not an architect. Tell... You give me a well-designed building, and I'll plan out an area for it in the park. I am not the one who wants to build each restroom. Just give me a restroom built by a professional, and I'll put it somewhere. Just saying. I know a lot of people will probably disagree with that. I don't care. I don't like having fully customizable buildings when they end up ruining my experience of the game. Be not, it's nice if they're there, but they're not necessary for me. Let's just forget that move on. Start talking about challenge and chaos mode. Challenge mode really does need a lot of work. Because the Jurassic difficulty in Jurassic World era is hair-pullingly frustrating, and it is 
It's just not fun. Alright, as I was saying before, sorry. Challenge mode. The Jurassic difficulty in the Jurassic World era was not fun. It was just frustrating. It was... I mean, I think I can say for myself that playing the Jurassic World difficulty on Jurassic World era on Isla Nublar took me 24 hours to complete. And that wasn't a fun 24 hours. And it's why I never even attempted Jurassic Challenge difficulty ever again until Jurassic Park came out. Jurassic Park era Jurassic Challenge is actually doable. Unlike Jurassic World era, which is just frustrating and complete BS. So hopefully they rebalance it so that challenge mode is actually fun and not just frustrating. And uh, yeah, no, that, that about covers the rebalance. I really, they really need to rebalance it. And that's going to have to go on top of the idea of new weather systems. I probably should have mentioned it in the campaign, but whatever. I'm not changing these slides now. <sighs> so we can't have tornadoes everywhere. You aren't going to have a tornado in your in, in Canada, all right? You're not going to have your tornado in your Canada tundra park. It just doesn't make any sense. It's going to have to be blizzards or hailstorms or any number of things like that. And, I mean, they're just going to be really redressing things up. If you had one in, like, the swamps of Florida, you could have, like, hurricanes. That'd be fun. Maybe even monsoons or floods. Hmm, probably too hard to program. Who knows? All I'm saying is that there's a lot of opportunity for new weather that would also affect the challenge mode, and it could mean that there's not so many goddamn tornadoes. Because I remember the last like six hours of that 24 hours was just me at four and a half stars, and every single goddamn time I got up to 4.9, or tornado would appear and just uh, carve straight through the park, and I just. I I, I, I I just had to start saving before the tornado hit because sometimes it would just hit in a pattern that would perfectly screw me over and just ruin my entire park and there was no recovering. It was not fun. And I just, I really hope tornadoes can go fuck off and re be replaced by something that's a little less BS to deal with. They will have to because you're not going to be able to have tornadoes in Canada. It's just, that's not how that works. Uh, let's talk about the more fun stuff, which is chaos mode, which is going to be like the, uh, the missions and also, you know, there's like, there was like, there was missions and there was a second category that was just, it was basically just missions, but had a different word attached to it from, uh, JPOG. It was scenarios. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't play those modes beyond trying to unlock site B. They were fun. And that's kind of what I want to talk about here is that I think chaos mode has the opportunity of being just as fun as the original JPOG. It probably won't be, maybe, who knows, maybe it'll be more memorable. Because I don't remember much about it besides that one with the maze and the beacon and rebuilding Jurassic Park. Those are the only two I really remember. Everything else just kind of blurs together. And uh, yeah, the question is, how far will it go? Because uh, they mentioned all five movies, but there's no way they can make anything out of Jurassic Park 3. I, I mean, with the original Jurassic Park, you can basically do the Return to Jurassic Park DLC, but instead you're doing it in actual 1993 and just setting up the original Jurassic Park. And maybe trying to stop Nancy's sabotage, make Jurassic Park successful, and show it to the world, and change all of history and whatnot. In the Lost World, you could play as the uh, hunters, and capture a bunch of dinosaurs, bring them back to San Diego. There's another change in history. In uh, Jurassic World, we already had that game. It's called Jurassic World Evolution. <laughs> if we're being honest here, if they do do a Jurassic World-based one, you're just playing Jurassic World Evolution. Uh, yeah. But hey, it's an option. And then for Fallen Kingdom, you could play as the hunters yet again, going and hunting and catching down all the dinosaurs on Isla Nublar before the volcano explodes. I won't even have a time limit. It'd be like the Lost World one, but like with a time limit on it, I guess. But my point is that there's, in every single movie, except for Jurassic Park 3, there is a chance to do something with the gameplay that's already available. Jurassic Park 3 is a bunch of people running around on an island until they leave. And there is, unless there's a first-person exploratory mode, there's nothing they can do, because there's not even any cars that drive in that movie. A boat? Are we going to be doing some fucking you know, boat drifts across Isla Sorna until we get into a fight with the Spinosaurus to probably feel something like more out of Lego game? Who knows? That's the only thing I could think of because that's the only vehicle they use in that entire movie. I don't know. I don't think Jurassic Park 3 will have much to play in terms of the chaos mode. Maybe the amalgam testing. I don't know. I'm just kind of BSing ideas. Because that's all I can do. Jurassic Park 3 really has always been the odd, like, the black sheep of the entire franchise. The worst movie, the worst ratings, the worst, like, the lowest box office grossing. 
killed the franchise for about 15 years. Yeah, it really didn't it really. And even here, it doesn't really have anywhere to fit in. It's always been the odd one out, rushed out and written in two weeks. Mm. I don't know. I don't want I don't dwell too much on that. I just I don't like Jurassic Park 3. I, I mean, it's nice that they have Spinosaurus in there. Spinosaurus was well designed and cool sounds. It was just implemented so goddamn poorly. Uh, let's just let's move on. Uh, and I want to question the rewards. Is challenge mode going to give us skins? And is chaos mode going to have any uh, special rewards tied to it? Are we going to get like individual species? New species from chaos mode or what? Is it just going to be, oh, look, this is cool. Do it for your own satisfaction. Or is it going to be, oh, this is cool. Here's a dinosaur if you can complete it. You know, if you're gonna, here's a Tarbosaurus. You can unlock the Tarbosaurus if you complete this chaos mode. <laughs> Maybe there'll just be new skins. Who knows? I'm just questioning is are we going to have rewards tied to the chaos mode or is it its own separate thing that's completely cut off from any other camp any other part of the game mm. i'm probably gonna get challenge mode rewards i think that's kind of obvious but yeah no so that covers that i think uh new dino behaviors this is something i really want to cover because the dinosaur behaviors in Jurassic Code evolution are just ugh, they're not good ever before is just stand and eat and drink and get into a circle of five and talk. And then they sometimes sleep if they can't find anything else to do up from that list. But yeah, so like I was saying, uh, their herbivores were really boring. They didn't do anything. And I'm going to have to talk about that a bit more, but I think I should... As much as I want to talk about herbivores, I have to get to the biggest point here, because I can't... Uh, stretch. Stretching, sorry. <laughs> raptor pack hunting? Please, for the love of God. <laughs> Please, raptor pack hunting. Even It's not just raptors either. Small dinosaurs. Just small dinosaurs need to start pack hunting. JPOG did it in 2001. In 2021, it should not be a problem anymore. If it wasn't a problem 20 years ago, it shouldn't be a problem today. Please, raptor pack hunting. Please, I'm praying... To Goddamn Raptor Jesus that we just get this properly implemented. I'm just... Mm. I really just... I really don't want this to not be a thing. I, it needs to be a thing. Let's just move on. It has to be. It has to be in the game. I swear. If it isn't. <laughs> I'm going to be so disappointed in this new game. I'm going to be so disappointed in this damn game. Uh, next up, herbivore dominance displays. I want more reactive herbivores, like I mentioned before. I want Triceratops and other Triceratops to lock horns and, you know, have little shoving contests. I want Pachycephalosaurus to butt heads. I want, I want, even Hadrosaurus, like, you know, slam into each other. Like, like kind of like how giraffes fight, so I'd imagine. Just something. Even J-Pog did this. Triceratops, they, they fought, didn't they? Pachycephalosaurus did too. Again, if J-Pog could do it 20 years ago, it should be in this game here. I understand it's not a sequel to J-Pog, but it should be at least living up to the standards of a 20-year-old game in the same genre. I'm just saying. It just... Mm, it irks me that it's even a possibility this might not be a thing. <sighs> Just so herbivore dominance displays. Make them more reactive. Make them more interesting. They don't just stand and just stare off into space and sleep when there's nobody around. <laughs> or they went, I mean, they're going to do that when there's nobody around. You know what I mean. Just whatever. And uh, how about more natural socializing? In JPOG, the this, Scalamimus this could just run amongst each other in a big old swarm. And they would just all talk to each other. In JPOG, they have to get into the union-mandated socialization circle that can only fit five members. And they just stand there and they squawk at each other. And then when the socialization is done, then they can run. Can we just get animals that don't need to get into these organized circles to talk? Can't they just talk when they're running around to one another? All the dinosaurs in JPOG did this. 20 years ago, it shouldn't be a problem now. I'm just going to keep... I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep fucking saying it. Because I'm not going to... I am not going to deal with this crap. I want things to be a bit more natural and reactive and not so artificial and very obviously computer generated animals do not gather in circles to talk they just they just they just socialize from wherever they are as long as they can hear each other it isn't necessary to stand in the circle they aren't trying to summon satan they're just trying to talk i'm getting really you know getting into these 
Uh, how about sauropod and carnivore interactions? Because in JPOG, uh, sauropods just could be put with anyone except for the Indominus, and uh, carnivores wouldn't care. They don't even, like, basically don't exist besides looking up at them every once in a while. Carnivores and sauropods need to have more interactions. Because the sauropods seem to operate on some different plane of existence where the only dinosaur that exists besides them is Indominus. And on that topic, if we bring the Indominus back for whatever reason, can we have the sauropods fight back? I really, 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 really hate how they try to, how in every single media, especially the Jurassic, like the, like the you know, they keep showing Brachiosaurus getting killed. Do they have any idea how strong a Brachiosaurus is and how deadly they are? People probably don't think about it too much because they're not, you know, paleo freaks like me. But a single kick from a sauropod has enough force to powderize an entire rib cage of a, of a carnivore that's trying to attack them. There's a reason carnivores didn't attack sauropods in the dinosaur times when they were fully grown. Because one single kick from an animal of that size and weight is, a, is your jawbone shattered like glass. You're just dead. There is no other way of putting it. Sauropods were the most dangerous dinosaurs to ever get near. They were slow, but they were deadly because even one little whip of their tail and your spine is snapped in two. They're big, they're dangerous, and the ones that aren't big have weapons, like a Margosaurus who has the neck spines. And there's another thing, if that Amargosaurus does not bend its head down and try to stab, you know, try like face a carnivore down with like you know the, the, the neck spines, then I don't even know what the purpose of it being there would be, because that's that's how, in case you don't know, that's how Amargosaurus attacked and defended itself. It used its back spines as a weapon. And Shunosaurus, that'd be a nice addition, but Shunosaurus, you know, use Clubtail, but those guys, you know, the Brachiosaurus, if, if an Indominus Rex goes and attacks a Brachiosaurus, it should be able to kick it, and just, like, destroy it, if it has, you know, I understand it's based on stats in the game, so we could, it had to be higher stats, but can we just have sauropods who fight back, and carnivores, other carnivores actually interact with them, like the T-Rex and Spinosaurus and whatnot, instead of just walking and looking at them? And moving on, how about carnivores intimidating one each other, one another? If my Allosaurus with 80 attack runs up to my Tyrannosaurus Rex with 300 attack, it should probably run away. It could be a pure number crunch. I don't care. You know, he's got this much more attack, this much more defense. This dinosaur should run away. Just, can we... I don't... Every carnivore should not battle to the death. And when one carnivore runs away, when that Allosaurus runs away from that T-Rex, can it go back to the JPOG thing where every single carnivore from that group will stay away from that guy? Because I really like that feature. It was really a basic way to implement intimidation, but I really want them to put intimidation into Jurassic World Evolution 2. If my T-Rex kills uh, Sukumimus, all the Sukumimus that's th 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 within the area should be afraid of him, and anyone they come into contact with should as well. They should be afraid of that T-Rex, because it killed one of their kind. Carnival Intimidation. It was in JPOG. 20 years later, it should be in this game. <laughs> Biome requirements. Biome requirements have been a part of Park Builders since I think some of the first ones were ever made. And since we're getting new biomes, I really think it's a good idea to include biome requirements for the dinosaurs because the dinosaurs, there's so many of them that feel so similar that just it doesn't matter. Stegosaurus, Kentrosaurus, Huyangosaurus, what's the difference between any of them? Just pick your favorite and roll them out. If there's no biome requirements, none of them feel unique or special. I pick Kentrosaurus because he's my favorite, but you know, there's no real reason not to just put him in Stegosaurus or whatever. <sighs> what I'm trying to say is, if your Stegosaurus likes Temperate Forest, and your Kentrosaurus likes Swamp, and your Huyangosaurus likes Tropical, then suddenly you have a lot of more uses for those creatures. Because, to put it simply, now they all require different things, and if you're building a tropical-themed park, instead of picking Stegosaurus or Kentrosaurus, you're picking Huyangosaurus, because that's what, the, that, that's, that's what matches your park's current theme. And it really does mean that every creature will suddenly have a use, instead of all just being interchangeable. Biome requirements could do a lot to make each individual creature of a similar group feel different. Every Steratopsian, every Stegosaurid, all of them. I'm just saying, it, it really would do wonders to make the game so much more interesting. And how about we get some sleep needs? Because the dinosaurs currently have no sleep need. It's a very basic request. Sleep need. If it isn't there, I, why? I, I'm, I'm just saying. <sighs> Alright. Now we move on to a big one. The prehistoric roster of the game. 
I'm just going to say this. There's going to be dinosaurs that are going to be removed from the roster of the original game. How do I know this? Well, let's go back to the release of Jurassic World Evolution. When it released, Allosaurus was not in the game. Allosaurus is a pretty basic creature to not include. And it felt a little weird. And then Fallen Kingdom came out. And the Fallen Kingdom DLC came out with Allosaurus, Carnotaurus, Baryonyx, Stiggy Moloch, and Indoraptor. And I... Th this is going to happen with Dominion. Who do we know is in Dominion, everyone? I think everyone should know it at this time. Everyone should probably know it at this point. It's the Giganotosaurus. The Giganotosaurus is in Jurassic World Dominion. We've known this for a long time. And there was a Giganotosaurus in Jurassic World Evolution. It is going to be removed. It's going to be remodeled, given new sounds, potentially even new animations. And it's going to be put back in when the Dominion, D when the Dominion movie comes out. Because this game is coming out six months before Dominion. I'm saying that because it's coming out 2021. It's December. Let's let's not even cut it. That is the earliest this game is going to come out. It's December. <laughs> That's just obvious. It might even be delayed. Let's also acknowledge that that is a very real fact. It could be delayed. But regardless, we even we've we, if you've been paying attention to the leaks, there's there's this idea of being batted around that Deinonychus is actually in Jurassic World Dominion, which means that it too would have to get removed, remodeled, given new sounds and whatnot, and then released in a potential future Dominion update. And that's kind of my point, is that I think there are going to be some dinosaurs that are removed that are going to be in Dominion. Dreadnoughtus might be in Dominion. It will be probably removed, remodeled, and given new sounds. There's a lot of options for creatures that are probably going to be in Dominion that are going to need to be removed. Iguanodon. The Iguanodon was in, that, was in that press release for the new short film. This is my point, is that there could be so many different dinosaurs that could be removed to give to be given the... Uh, to be given the... Uh, Sorry, to be given a rework for Dominion's uh, version of it. And that is a very real possibility. And on top of that, we have to consider, you know, the fact that... Uh, you know, no, that, that is what we need to consider. Moving on to the next part, aquatic and flying reptile variety. I'm going to be honest with everyone here right now and say that I don't think there's going to be much variety on either side of that spectrum. I believe that the flying reptiles will be Tranodon and Dimorphodon. With Jurassic World and Park 3 variants of Pteranodon. And the aquatic will just be Mosasaurus. I'm sure I'm going to be disappointed in that idea. Who knows, maybe we get one or two extra in each category. But I genuinely believe that it's going to just be a baseline. At, the, at release, we're going to get a baseline small amount of flying and aquatic creatures. Because, the well let's face the facts, there's already going to be 70 dinosaurs in the game. No matter how many aquatic or flying creatures they, they release at the launch of the game, it can't be that many. It can't be 70. And so I'm going to be real with everybody here. I think the first two big DLCs for this game are going to be flying reptiles and aquatic reptiles. As the, We'll be using them as their theme. And that's kind of what I want to get onto here, because, you know, on top of those removed dinosaurs, we're going to get some new ones in there, Amargosaurus and whatnot, Celiophysis. I believe most of the launch is going to be covering dinosaurs, and then that's going to be it for the dinosaurs for a while, as they focus mostly on aquatic and flying reptile varieties in new DLCs that I'm going to talk about right now. The first idea of these two is the flying reptile DLC, a Pteranodon DLC type thing. Now, both of these DLCs, my ideas for them is that they're going to be expansions to the main campaign, a la The Secrets of Dr. Wu. And I'm going to be completely honest here. The idea of a Tyrannodon DLC doesn't really cover much, because Tyrannodons is a lot... Sm Flying Reptiles is a lot smaller of a group than Aquatic Reptiles, at least in terms of coverage. So if there was a if there was a Tyrannodon DLC, first of all, we'd have to get a new campaign area. I think some sort of cliff-type preserve would be pretty cool. Maybe something overlooking like a canyon. Something that looks like the Grand Canyon. Maybe not the Grand Canyon itself, but something like it would be pretty cool. Maybe even like a coastal overlook. That could be neat, you know. A nice overlook of like a cliff from an ocean. Nice little Pteranodon preserve. And with some, uh, you know, some voice lines from the characters. And the goal of a, like a mission to build a mostly Pteranodon, oop, mostly Pteranodon based you know, dinosaur nature preserve thing. And uh, with uh, and I also believe that they would uh, really expand the Pteranodon facilities as well. With a lot more attractions and stuff based around the Pteranodons. You know, who knows? I mean, I don't really have anything specific. I'm just thinking that it's going to be, this is the way the DLC would work. And then finally, we can talk about, like, new creatures. Which, first of all, they, if this isn't at the game at release, it needs to come out. Quetzalcoatlus. If Quetzalcoatlus is never in Jurassic World Evolution 2, despite the fact that they're advertising, uh, you know, the flying creatures so heavily, 
I'm very, 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 very disappointed. Quetzalcoatlus is the coolest Pteranodon, and anyone who tries to argue is wrong. But there's also other creatures you could put in there. Uh, Ramphorhynchus, Tapijara, Pterodostra. One I didn't put in here, which would be pretty neat, is uh, Geostinbergia, which would be really cool as a nice reference to the scrapped idea for the Lost World. There's, there's, there is enough to get maybe like 10 new Pteranodons into the game, maybe even a little bit more. My point is that, say, three months from the release, they give us a uh, Pteranodon DLC that really expands the uh, Pterosaur Domes. And gives us a ton of new species to work with. It would be awesome. We even see like naturism at the bottom of it. That'd be pretty cool. Imagine, imagine you go into your your terador, terador, pterosaur dome, and you have your Quetzalcoatlus, you know, Quetzalcoatlus walking on the ground, eating from a ground-based feeder as pteranodons and demorphodons fly around overhead. You even get some dinosaurs in there. You could have you know some big sauropods walking among them. It would it would be so friggin' awesome to see something like that. And I really hope that that's what we can get in the future. There's a big old Pteranodon DLC that has a ton of species, expands pterosaur facilities, and gives us a few new... Like a, you don't really need one new location with some with some new like mission dialogue and whatnot. So that's it. That's what I think would be a good idea for like a first release. Because what I think would happen then is the really big one that would take a long time to develop. That is an aquatic reptile-based DLC. Which would include probably multiple new areas one or two or probably even two or three uh new areas with voices and dialogue and the whole idea of the dlc would be to create specifically aquatic preserves for gigantic prehistoric ocean creatures like even new areas would probably be like half land half ocean perhaps even entirely ocean which is like an island in the middle for like your main base of operations and some really really expanded and uh, really expanded aquatic facilities that have a lot of depth to them. Hmm? Yeah, I used that one before. I'm using it again because it's a good one. It's a good ocean pun. So, uh, let's just get into that, shall we? The ideas of a coastal and aquatic facilities would be amazing, first of all. But then let's talk about, like, well, what would the new like expanded facilities be? Not only would you need fences, which you could just... I mean, we already saw the uh, really tall fence that was used to separate the beach from the Mosasaurus enclosure in Jurassic World, that flyover, which is, I still say, a very bad idea. But, you know, we could have, we don't even need, like, fences. You could have, like, a beaker, like, not a beaker, but a buoy that marks, like, invisible fence boundaries. That would just shock the creatures if they get too close. You could have underwater tunnels. Like, you know, you walk through, you could see, you know, above you all the ocean creatures. Uh, you could have all sorts of fun stuff. Like, even, like, I put here, like, a shark cage. Imagine going into your, like, a Dunkley Osteos enclosure and just getting in a shark cage or somewhere around with it. Like in the, like in the Swimming with Sea Monsters. Yeah, we've all seen that, and that would be so cool to just watch your guests, even be a part of, take a first-person view from the shark cage while the Dunkley Osteus is swimming around. Speaking of Dunkley Osteus, the expanded roster, which would include things like Megalodon, Dunkley Osteus, Elasmosaurus, Liopleurodon, Ichthyosaurus, and so many other prehistoric creatures. Even on the, on this list, uh, lead sick these uh, Zinfactinus. There is just there's there's so many aquatic reptiles. You could have somewhere up to twenty new creatures in the game, and that's why I say that this DLC would not be coming out anytime soon. I'm talking something that comes nine months, even a whole year after the release of this game. It's just in a huge just dump of 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 aquatic creatures. They're just 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 to hit our faces and show us all these wonderful things that we can now have you could even just retool the whole like system just have like a ton of underwater even like buildings like like maybe the aquatic tunnels act as roads you can connect you know underwater eateries and underwater everything there's so many opportunities to make the aquatic gameplay of this game a just a total blast with a dlc like this and that's really what i want to say you can you know, you have, you have your feeding shows. You can have you can train your ichthyosaurs like dolphins and have them do tricks. There's there's so much. I don't think I think I'm going way too off topic. Okay, this is this this is a crazy idea. It's probably never gonna happen, but I'm just I really do hope that they eventually do come around to doing this. Also, I mentioned this with the Quetzalcoatlus. If it you know if Quetzalcoatlus is in the game by the end of development, mm, I'm very disappointed. The same goes with Uncle Osteus. If you're promoting your aquatic. As an entire section of the game, I need a Dunkley Osteus because Dunkley Osteus is just the coolest. I don't care what anyone else says. You can keep your big shark and long neck and whatever. I want the big armored fish. 
Yeah, no, that, that, that about covers everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, th that's really what I... Yeah, that, that, that is really it. You got, you know, obviously the expanded, they would have, like, new expanded ideas and new missions and new voice lines and whatnot, but I really do think that if we just... These are, these are, these are DLCs. You take everything else, you know, you take the removed dinosaurs, you know, we take all these new behaviors, we take everything here and we add it all together, we would have a greatly improved Jurassic World Evolution. And, I mean, Jurassic World Evolution 1 went from being a mediocre game to a great game by the end of development when we got, you know, Return to Jurassic Park with all the additions and bug fixes and whatnot. And I'm kind of hoping that Jurassic World Evolution 2 can go from a great game at launch to an amazing or fantastic game by the end of development, which and make it like the ultimate dinosaur park building simulator. I have 300 hours in Jurassic World Evolution. I kind of hope to double that number with Jurassic World Evolution 2 just, that, just because it may be so fun to play. I really hope for a lot from this game, but I don't expect most of what I've said here. I'm going to be real with everyone. I live by the motto, expect the worst, hope for the best, because expecting the worst means that you can never be disappointed, but hoping for the best means that there's always something to look forward to. A lot of people say that's a terrible life motto, but I'd say it gives me the most realistic expectations for life itself, and that includes something like this game. I don't expect most of what I've said here to actually be in the game. I hope that it's there, and more importantly, I mean, who knows? I mean, we, we still have a long time to release... Heck, while I'm editing this video, they could release information that says some of these things that I've already wished for are already in the game. I just... I This is my big wish list. Everybody else is making tons of videos going to talk a lot about the game. This right here covers everything that I am interested in personally. And that's about it. I really hope for the most from this game, and I really hope that it does exceed my expectations by the end of development and shows me the greatest dinosaur park building simulator the world has ever seen. And if it does that, I'll be a happy man, and I'll probably play this game until the rest of time. I mean, I, I played JPOG from the day I got it on PlayStation 2 as a kid. I still have it. Today as an adult. I play it every now and then. I have more hours in that game than I probably do any other game in the world, and I really hope that Jurassic Evolution 2 comes out and smashes that game and has everything it has and more, and just becomes the ultimate dinosaur park building simulator. I really hope that that's what we see. And that's what this list is meant to convey, the ideas that I think would make it the greatest park building simulator, dinosaur park building simulator ever. So yeah, that covers it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this game in the future, and I hope you all are too. I'll be talking about more news as it releases, hopefully, because I don't have a lot of time to make LEGO videos. Uh, a lot of you, anyone who's watching this far, uh, I don't have a lot of time for LEGO videos. Like, literally right now, as I look to my uh, future schedule, I don't know when the next day I have off is. I'm looking three weeks out, and I don't have a single day off. So, I don't have any time for LEGO builds, unfortunately. I really wish I did, but I just don't have the time. I want to have the time. But I barely have an hour. I don't even think I'm going to upload this today. If I'm, if, if I, if I'm lucky, I can upload this today. If I'm not, I'm going to have to upload it tomorrow. And that's kind of a bummer, because this isn't even a long video. It's just... Uh, I'm talking about stuff with the channel. Whatever. Well, I uh, just... Just take that for what it is. I'm going to try to upload this today. If I can't get it uploaded today, I'll get it uploaded tomorrow. <sighs> and uh, hopefully I can get more videos out to you guys as soon as possible. And God, I'm glad I made those bite-sized builds because those videos are going to save me. Actually being able to make videos for... are going to be able to make... Allow me to keep content rolling for a while. Well, in between the actual LEGO content. I can make a ton of news videos like this, but anything else is going to be difficult. I'm going to go to Eddie here. No more stalling. Thank you for watching, and uh, hope to see you in future when uh, other Jurassic World Evolution news comes out.